Welcome. This video will assist you in the process of installing your Schlage Hand Punch GT400 to a hollow backed wall. For installation on a solid wall, please consult with a licensed contractor. It's recommended that the installer use the Schlage GT400 installation manual in addition to this video for reference during the actual installation. This manual can be downloaded online. Before getting started, you will need the following pieces of equipment for installation. Provided in your installation kit is the Schlage Hand Punch GT400 terminal, wall fasteners, mounting screws, and small security head screws for optional use. Additionally, you will need safety glasses, a dedicated power source, an ethernet cable, a Phillips head screwdriver, a grounding strap, and a wrench or 11 32nd socket wrench. First, select a location for installation. For optimum safety and performance, the terminal should be out of the path of pedestrian and vehicular traffic. Make sure that the terminal is not exposed to excessive airborne dust, direct sunlight, water, or chemicals. It is recommended that the terminal be installed on a dedicated power line to avoid interference from heavy machinery or appliances. The installation in this video is for indoor installation only. For outdoor installation, a heated platen and enclosure is recommended. There are three options for running the wires to the terminal. A wiring decision needs to be made at this time. Wiring may be run through the hole in the wall plate, through the slot in the terminal, or through the battery cover. See the installation manual for details. It is recommended that a minimum of 17 inches of wiring extend from the wall for ease of connection. All local electric codes need to be followed when routing wire and making the terminal connections. The terminal needs to be laid out on a soft, flat surface to prevent scratching or damaging the unit. To remove the wall mount, insert fingers into the hole and slide down. Set the wall mount aside. Remove speaker covers while unit is laid out. Push the speaker cover down towards the front of the reader. Make sure you are pushing on the plastic only. Push until you hear a snap. Gently pull cover away from metal shield and slide out. Repeat step on other side. Set covers aside. Before proceeding, please take appropriate safety precautions. Measure and mark a point 49 inches or 125 centimeters from the surface of the finished floor. This point is used by the leveling hole where the top center point of the terminal should be mounted. At this height, the unit's platen will be 40 inches or 102 centimeters from the floor. This conforms to the Americans with Disabilities Act standards. For optimal biometric performance, all terminals on a network should be placed at the same height. For a hollow wall, drive a small nail into the wall at the mark. Hang the wall mount from the leveling hole located near the top of the wall mount. Use a level to verify that the wall mount is level. Mark the locations of the two upper mounting holes and the two lower mounting holes. For a concealed wiring connection through the wall, mark the rear cable entry hole on the wall mount. Remove the wall mount and nail. For a concealed wiring connection, drill a half inch hole in the center of the outlined rear cable entry hole. For a surface conduit wiring connection option, please see the installation manual and contact a licensed contractor if needed. Install the four supplied hollow wall anchors into the mounting hole locations. Then use the four provided screws to attach the mount to the wall. Clear all dust and debris away from the terminal mounting location. Gently pick up the unit and take it to the wall. Slide the unit onto the wall mount hooks. Be aware of possible damage due to electrostatic discharge, especially when working on carpeted surfaces or in dry environments. Use a grounding strap to minimize ESD concerns. Run wiring using the method previously chosen. Tuck wires under the tabs on the terminal to minimize risk of pinching. Do not apply power until you are ready to configure the terminal. 
Connect the earth ground. The earth ground connection is made to the ground pin on the back plate with an 832nd nut. Connect the Ethernet cable to the Ethernet connection socket inside the terminal casing. If using a backup battery, locate the backup battery connector and cable and connect it now. Make other connections as necessary. This may include proper seating of the USB, an optional bell relay, and integrated heater cables. Make sure that the four screw holes in the body of the terminal are aligned with the screw holes in the wall mount. Use the supplied screws or equivalent to mount the terminal to the wall. Note that a special tool is required to install and remove a security head screw that the factory supplies. Install screws into the upper and lower screw holes. Install the top speaker covers on both sides of the terminal. Slide cover in until you hear a snap. Push cover in until it is flat against metal shield. Slide cover back towards wall until flush. To install both side caps, place the outside ridge of the cap under the edge of the terminal body, then rotate the side cap towards the terminal body until it snaps into place. The ferrite clip must be attached to the terminal's power cord in order to be FCC compliant. Make a loop in the power cord approximately 6 inches or 15 centimeters from the power supply. The loop will keep the clip from sliding on the power cord. Clamp the ferrite clip over the loop. Make sure the tabs fully engage. The terminal may now be powered up and is ready for network configuration. This concludes the installation video. More information can be found in your user manual by calling customer service or on our website.